Hello, good morning. Right then, I can't believe there's so many of you here already, over 500. Welcome, 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 welcome to the final day of National University Week. Um, I'm sure that you have seen me before, but those of you who don't know me, I'm Heather from Career Map. And this morning we're kicking off with an extremely exciting session that's going to be run by Zoe, who's just popped up, um, from Condé Nast College of Fashion and Design. So Zoe will be talking about the kinds of roles that are in industry and the routes that you can take to get there. Um, so before I hand over, I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping for you. I can see somebody's found the chat. Oh, a lot of you found the chat already. Hi, Annie, Lois, Georgie, Laura, Ellis. Hello, Sean. Um, right then, these guys have already found the chat box. For those of you who haven't, it's on the right hand side. Um, ask any questions that you've got. Um, as Zoe presents, and then we'll do our best to cover as many as we can um, in the last section of the presentation where we'll do like a, a Q&A together. Hello, everybody. Um, finally, before I hand over, um, the session's been recorded. It will be emailed to you. Don't worry about missing out on anything. But as I've been saying all week, if there's something that you really need to know now, just take a screenshot of it on your phone. Uh, but you will have everything emailed to you next week. Um, and I think without any further ado, it's my opportunity to disappear. Uh, I hand over to Zoe and I'll see you for the Q&A. Thank you so much, Heather. And I'm I'm so excited to be here today and talk to you all about um opportunities in the really exciting world of fashion and I'm incredibly lucky and I feel so honoured and privileged to be talking to you today about my favourite subject. I have to say, and I'm going to hold my hands up at this point, I am a complete fashion evangelist. I'm obsessed with fashion and media. I love it and I feel so lucky to have worked in this industry and I do try and persuade everybody I talk to to work in fashion and the creative industries because, you know, it's the future. So I'm going to talk to you um, a little bit today about all the different kind of career paths you can take into fashion and the creative industries. Um, and really, I, I think that it's, it's so hard when you're thinking about what you're going to do in the future, because, you know, how could you know about all the different things you can do and all the different roles you can have? So I've worked in the fashion industry since 1988, so a really, really long time. Um, and I've been incredibly lucky for the last um, 30 years, I think, probably. I have worked for Condé Nast, which is a global media company. When I started working for Condé Nast, it was a magazine publishing company. I'm sure you have never heard of Condé Nast, but I'm sure you're familiar with all our brands like Vogue, GQ, Glamour, House and Garden. And I'm just going to show you a short video about Condé Nast and hopefully... Um, it'll give you some ideas of what Condé Nast is like, what it's about. So we're going to move on to the next slide. And Heather is kindly going to start the video. I'll just send, uh, set it up now for you. If we can all Thank just turn you. our mics off so there's no feedback, I'll uh, start the video now. Just pop your mic back on, Zoe. Thank you. Can we can we start the presentation again? Fantastic. Thank you. So that really gives you a good idea of Condé Nast and all the brands. Um, as I said, Condé Nast is a global media company creating content across all the different print, digital and 
uh, video channels and increasingly across all our socials. So I'm sure you're all familiar with our flagship brand, Vogue, um, and familiar with maybe GQ, Vanity Fair and Glamour. And this uh, photograph, I could not resist putting in my favourite Billie Eilish at the Met Gala. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Met Gala, which is Anna Winter's um, incredible party where she raises money for the uh, Metropolitan Museum in New York. But it's become a huge, huge, huge event um, globally for celebrities, for um, music, fashion, uh, the whole world of uh, entertainment. So at Condé Nast, we uh, aim to entertain, surprise, empower, and we provide exclusive access to uh, the, the best. We celebrate the extraordinary and we um, strive for excellence in everything we do. So um, my career journey, I, I uh, read History of Art at Cambridge University. And when I left, I really wanted to write for Vogue. I'd been a very um, uh, bookish child. I read loads and loads of books and wrote loads of stories. Um, and I come from a very, very small village in in the north of England. And um, I used to look at Vogue magazine and think, oh, I'd really love to be part of that world. And I was incredibly lucky. I, uh, When I left university, I went and did a, a, a journalism course in London, but I uh, tried to get on some graduate training programs, but I didn't manage to. But as luck would have it, and so much of what we do is, is about luck, but I truly believe you make your own luck. Um, one of the girls on my journalism course, her sister worked for a photographic agency as part of a, a photographic gallery, which is probably the leading photographic gallery still in London called Hamilton's. And one of the photographers, Norman Parkinson, was looking for an assistant, a PA, a secretary. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I really want to be someone's secretary. And I, everybody said to me, but this could be the most incredible, um, you know, door this could open the door to Vogue because Norman Parkinson had photographed models for Vogue for 50 years he'd photographed the royal family he'd photographed every Hollywood celebrity from Elizabeth Taylor to music celebrities like the Beatles you know incredible body of work so um I guess we'd say now I got over myself and it was such a great a great piece of advice because, you know, you just never know where any opportunity is going to take you. And I went to the interview. I was lucky enough to get the job and I worked for Norman Parkinson for three years, which did open the door to Vogue to me. And um, I joined British Vogue for 10 years and I worked as um, the Vogue fashion bookings editor. So I organized all the fashion, beauty and lifestyle shoots for 10 years at Vogue through the 1990s. So incredibly exciting time of the supermodels, um, you know, all flying around the world on Concord, just the most incredible, incredible experience. I was very, very lucky, you know, went to Alexander McQueen shows, met the most amazing creatives in the industry. And then I left Vogue at the end of 1999 and I left to have my kids actually, and I moved out of London, but I was lured back um, and asked to be part of a launch team for a magazine called Easy Living, which is called Myself in Europe. And I was, again, the booking editor for nine years. Um, and then the Condé Nast College was launched in 2013, just over nine years ago. And I was asked to come on board to be part of the team to launch uh, the Condé Nast College. So the reason that Condé Nast launched the college was really to shine a light on all the different careers that you could have on the business side of fashion. So just to be very clear, we don't teach any garment design, but we teach about fashion communication, fashion journalism, marketing, PR, things like trend forecasting, uh, creative direction. And, and really, I think it's such um, an incredible opportunity for people to learn about the industry from the inside out. Um, and I have been incredibly lucky to work with the Vogue team. I still work very closely with the Vogue team now. Um, and Edward Enenful is the editor in chief of British Vogue. I'm sure you're familiar with Edward. He's all about inclusion, about diversity of perspective, about activism. And it's about culture, about current affairs through the lens of style, fashion and beauty, which is very different from when I worked at Vogue in the 90s. It was all about, you know, fashion, 
Um, and but I think you know there's so much more now to Vogue, and it's such an incredible, incredible platform. So many interesting uh, articles uh, about you know what we do about politics, about activism, inclusion. Um, so we're very, very lucky. Vogue is part of an ecosystem of many different Vogues. Um, the latest launch has been Vogue Scandinavia. And in fact, two of our, the graduates of the Condé Nast College uh, make up the social media team at Vogue Scandinavia. It's an amazing launch because the, um, the model, the Vogue model has been taken, the model of the magazine, the business model has been taken and um, was launched in a sustainable way. So, you know, really moving forward because fashion has so much to do to become more ethical, more sustainable. And, you know, they've really taken that on board. Um, uh, Martina Bonnier, who's the editor in chief and the team. So it's really interesting Our have with our graduates working there, we have quite a, a close connection with Vogue Scandinavia. And we have worked a lot with the launches of Vogue's in the past. I was work, I worked very closely with the launch of Vogue Russia back in um, 1996, which was a long time ago. So what I really wanted to talk to you about today is um, how important the fashion industry is to the global economy. There are so many preconceived ideas about fashion, but it really does play a major role in the global economy. So um, I've got some great stats for you from uh, the uh, State of Fashion McKinsey report from last year. Um, 21 billion pounds is the value of the fashion industry to the British economy. And I think importantly for you, almost a million people are directly employed by the fashion industry in the UK. And fashion is the largest employer of all the creative industries in the UK. And, you know, what I try and impress upon my students at the Condé Nast College is think about future proofing your career. Even since the uh, Condé Nast College uh, was launched back in 2013, so many different roles have evolved because the one constant thing about fashion is that it's always changing. And fashion needs young, innovative, creative, individual thinking. Um, and I think going forward, artificial intelligence, um, and robots and machines are going to take up so many sort of a traditional role, say, in medicine or law. But I think it's so exciting with fashion because people are still going to be needed to have those creative ideas. We still value human creativity. Um, and new roles are being created all the time as the digital landscape evolves, particularly in video, data-driven analytical roles um, and gamification, which is, I think, really interesting. And I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But fashion is a really fast moving industry. If you're somebody who enjoys a fast paced environment, working in a fast paced environment, it's a great place to be. Um, you know, shopping habits are changing, moving to all the digital channels. You can buy things directly from the pages of magazines now. And virtual reality and the metaverse are increasingly important. We had a big symposium uh, last week with um, the founder and CEO of the British Beauty Council, Millie Kendall, and the um, beauty and wellness director of British Vogue. And they were talking about the impact of the metaverse on beauty and how it's evolving. It's absolutely fascinating. And I think that, you know, you as consumers are really focused on ethics, um, about employment standards and social justice. So we can really see um, how fashion can make a big impact. You know, culture is so much part of what, you know, what we're doing. And this is what I was talking about, the gamification of fashion, because the metaverse is going to radically change retail. You can now do a, a course at UAL to design clothes for avatars. So, you know, virtual clothes <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, brands like Balenciaga and Balma and Gucci are developing games um, for their, you know, customers. And it, it's really it's it's just incredible to think that, I guess, in the future, we will all be having a um, tea with Coco Chanel in Paris wearing a bespoke couture uh, Chanel suit. And that will be your avatar. So, you know, it's it's incredibly exciting and in that the, the uh, possibilities are endless. 
Um, and the global gaming industry is on track to be worth about $219 billion by 2024. So, you know, the potential is huge. Heritage brands, these are the, the sort of areas that I've really seen growing. Burberry, uh, Fendi, uh, I've uh, screenshotted some, you know, a great image from the most recent couture uh, collection. And uh, Kim Jones, British designer Kim Jones, is their creative director and really making big waves in the industry. So the comeback of all these heritage brands is, is um, really significant. Um, so what I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what you should think about if you want to work in the creative industries, working in fashion and what comes across strongly from all the people, all these speakers that we have at the college. And yesterday I was hosting an event in Vogue House and I invite eight of the editors working on all the different uh, Condé Nast brands from Vogue to GQ and Glamour to talk about what they think is really important now for um, you know, students who are graduating, going into the industry. And they all say, it's all about your attitude. It's about having a real um, can-do attitude. It's about stepping forward. It's about volunteering. It's about being memorable for all the right reasons, you know, turning up early, leaving late, you know, making sure that you really make an impression being polite, being, you know, respectful and friendly. And, you know, even even the, the sort of <laughs> most senior editors would not be, um, would not mind making someone a cup of tea. So, you know, it's about the attitude. It's about having the right attitude. Um, being authentic. I think thinking about what makes you unique. I think it's really hard now in this age of social media because we all want to be, you know, we want to fit in. We want to be... Um, part of the crowd but it's really important to be you know your authentic self because it's it's so important to have a voice to ha you know have an opinion particularly in fashion and the creative industries because it's all about having an idea it's all about unique creative ideas um, you know organizing events which are experiences so think about what you're good at what do you love are you somebody who loves organizing are you somebody who can write really well focus on your strengths because fashion loves individuality and you know people are going to love you for being you and I think you have to celebrate you know your individuality and have a modern mindset because you know it's about blue sky thinking it's about thinking outside the box um, because if you're organizing for example an event because so much about what we do now in fashion is about the experience an event or a show you know if you can come up with a great unique original idea then that's going to really get you a long way and you know all the editors who came to talk yesterday said you know in their teams everybody's ideas are considered everybody's ideas are valued everybody you know you work together and you collaborate. And that's one of the most important things to realize about fashion, which I think The Devil Wears Prada, the movie, The Devil Wears Prada, really, um, it never it never shows how much teamwork there is in fashion. It's all about working as part of a team. So I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of roles that you can have within the fashion industry that may not be what you might imagine. So fashion design, I guess most people think about fashion as being fashion design. And this was a great design from Richard Quinn. Um, I was lucky enough to be at the show where the Queen came to the show uh, because she was presenting Richard with um, the award for British design back in 2018. And I had 30 of our students with me and we were, we just couldn't believe it. It was like, and the students kept saying, is that the actual Queen? So that was a real fashion moment for me. But um, you know, I think unless you're, you know, the new Alexander McQueen or you have an unlimited budget, it's really hard to make it now as a designer. But there are so many other things you can do. However, having said that, if it is your dream to be a fashion designer, we are incredibly lucky because Central St. Martins is globally recognized as the best design school in the world. But it is really, really hard. You have to learn how to build your brand, how to market your brand. It's an incredibly competitive marketplace now particularly with the huge global luxury conglomerates like LVMH, Kering and Richemont who look after all the brands they have huge budgets so you know there are lots and lots of other things you can do within the industry um, and 
there are so many different areas in fashion from ready to wear to couture, bags, shoes, jewelry. And just to give you some examples of roles, uh, what some of our graduates are doing. So you could be a studio manager and that's the sort of role that you might take on if you're good at multitasking. So one of our graduates works uh, a studio manager for Amelia Wickstead, who is probably Britain's most exciting young couturier. So um, uh, our graduate is organizing uh, Amelia's uh, diary. So she's working with Hollywood celebrities, the royal family, high net worth individuals. So being super organized, being diplomatic, being really, really on it is so important. She works a lot uh, tirelessly actually to organize Amelia's show for London Fashion Week. Uh, she also writes a lot of press releases. And funny enough, I saw her the other day in Soho near where the college is in Greek Street because she was running some jackets to have some buttonholes made. So it's somebody who loves multitasking, who's really, really efficient, who's really organized. Um, and I would say that uh, so many of the roles now, you need to be able to turn your hand to many, many things. I was chatting to the managing editor of Vogue, Mark Russell the other day, and he was saying, you know, he needs somebody who's going to get stuck in, who can write a press release, who can write, a t you know, turn something around really quickly to put on the website. Um, his assistant at the moment, funnily enough, is her great passion is music. So she has developed her own um, piece on the platform, the digital platform to write about music. So, you know, you can make the role your own. A press officer is somebody who uh, will be doing a lot of writing. It's about uh, uh, working for a brand and promoting that brand. So one of our graduates is working for luxury high street brand Joseph. So she spends a lot of her time writing press releases, uh, forming and re maintaining relationships with editors on magazines and digital platforms. So it's somebody who's really good, a real people person who can write really well, um, who's very, very much, you know, press and customer facing. So um, being a personal assistant, as I mentioned, is such a great place to start. And one of our graduates um, was talking yesterday, Sally Hunter, about her incredible role. So she works for Deborah Joseph, who is the editor in chief of Glamour. She's also editorial creative director of all the Glamours in Europe. Um, and Sally is also the office manager. So a really, really interesting role. And she was saying to our current students, um, you know, you never, ever, ever underestimate the importance of how much you're going to learn from somebody who is really high up, who's really established in the industry. You know, she said, I'm privy to conversations with, you know, the head of TikTok, the head of Chanel, the head of Prada. And she said, you know, the opportunities that I have in that role are incredible and you're learning from the best. And I would definitely say that my role as PA to uh, top photographer Norman Parkinson opened so many doors. I learned so much. I met so many people, you know, so that's another takeaway. Really, you know, lots of people think, oh, I'm a graduate. I don't want to be someone's PA. But just remember, you know, you're going to get to meet amazing people. And uh, it, it often is the most incredible experience. You learn so much. Um, so social media manager, as I mentioned, um, a couple of our students uh, are working in the industry as social media managers. And if you're working as a social media manager for a brand, it's all about, again, being good at writing, multitasking, being very much press facing. So being a real people person, but being really on it, because in social media, you have to get, you know, you have to turn everything around really quickly um, an events coordinator, I think I've touched on events a few times now, but events are so important now in the industry, um, particularly for for brands, obviously shows, fashion shows. We work very closely with Sarah Blonstein, who uh, works exclusively with the British Fashion Council in London Fashion Week. Um, and a lot of our students do work experience with her and help with shows. But, you know, events, it's all about organising a unique and memorable event because you want to, you know, really build your brand, market your brand and reach as many people as you can. So a huge breadth of roles in fashion design. That's just an example of uh, some of the things you can do. Having, you know, being really well organized, being a good communicator, maintaining 
relationships are also important. Um, and then fashion media, that's obviously Condé Nast's area of expertise. This is Edward Enenful, who is the editor-in-chief of British Vogue, and he's also creative director of all the Vogues across Europe. So he's a pretty busy guy. He is um, also chair of the Condé Nast College Advisory Council, and I work very, very closely with him uh, to promote diversity and inclusivity across Condé Nast education globally. And he's just breathes so much kind of new life into Vogue. And he really is, he's an inspiration, I have to say. I, I, I love working with him. So as I mentioned, I worked for British Vogue back in the 90s. And I could not believe how many people it took to create a, a magazine. And now, obviously, the magazine is not just the print magazine, but it's across all the digital platforms. So, you know, the sort of roles within uh, media are um, things like being a creative director. So you would have a background in graphics. Um, you could be a writer. So on British Vogue, all the Vogues, there is a section for features, which is writing about the cultural side of our lives. So politics, arts, um, and as well as a work, writing about trends and fashion designers. So it's all about creating content across all the platforms. So that's so, so important. Um, you know, our features director, Giles Hattersley, had the incredible scoop writing um, about Adele when she had her, <clears throat> her latest album out. Um, fashion styling is so important. On the left here, you can see Grace Coddington, probably one of the most famous Vogue uh, stylists. I'm sure you're all familiar with the incredible Alice in Wonderland story she shot for American Vogue with Annie Leibovitz. Um, stylists get to travel the world, they work closely with photographers, it's all about being incredibly creative. So as you can see, there are lots of different opportunities um, for being creative, but then there are so many roles on the magazine for being well organised. As a producer, I spent most of my time organising um, for teams to fly all over the world, and I, I adored it. I, I loved organising it. And my mum used to say to me, but you're a bit like Cinderella. You're always left at home in the office. And I said, but I love being part of it. You know, when you see the final, when you see the final pictures, you feel like you've been part of that incredible jigsaw, putting it all together, making it all happen. Um, and, you know, social media now incredibly important. And the commercial side of uh, the brands are phenomenally important because I think what nobody realizes is that, you know, a magazine, a brand like Vogue is there to make money. So it's all about uh, finding ways of generating revenue. So from advertising, creative partnerships, increasingly collaborations. Um, and quite a few of our graduates are working in advertising operations, which is where, you know, um, uh, videos are dropped onto the website, those really annoying videos that pop up all the time. But those are, you know, incredible source of revenue for, for um, our brands. So, you know, incredible breadth of roles across fashion media. So, you know, if you're really, really creative, there's a place for you. If you're somebody who's more um, interested in the sort of logistical side, I, I did do quite a lot of what writing when I worked on Vogue. I did quite a lot of styling. But what I really, really loved, I found my niche, I guess, was organizing shoots. And I went on to do that throughout my career. So I worked on Vogue for 10 years and then I worked on Easy Living, but I also had my own production company on the side and worked for a lot of British heritage brands like the White Company and Bowdoin. Um, and I worked for um, a couple of Middle Eastern royal families. So really, really, really interesting. You can do so many different and interesting things. And I think that's a great thing about fashion you know no day is ever the same it's always different but what I love most of all and I feel incredibly lucky to have worked with some of the most creative minds in the industry I mean phenomenal I'm so so honoured and lucky to work with the most amazing people um, and I still do so fashion retail um, is a huge source of employment so you could be a creative director um, a video producer, as I mentioned, increasingly video and moving image are phenomenally important. Um, but you could do something like be a visual merchandiser or a buyer for, um, you know, a, a big department store like Harrods or Selfridges. A lot of our graduates have gone to work for some of the big, uh, uh, big 
retailers like Harrods, Selfridges, Harvey Nichols, because they have incredible training schemes. Um, digital marketing manager, social media strategist, trend forecaster. I was chatting yesterday to one of our lecturers, Ruth Marshall Johnson, who used to work for WGSN, which is one of the biggest trend forecasting agencies. And it's it's a really interesting role. It's much more analytical than many roles within the industry because you, you're um, analyzing data, but you're traveling around the world looking for new trends that are coming up. And um, you're reporting back to brands like Chanel and Gucci to tell them what, you know, what they think is going to be happening um, globally with trends. So really, really interesting. I kind of think that if I have my time again, I would either be a trend forecaster or work in beauty. <laughs> um being a show producer I've, I've done loads of shows and and if you came to me and you had organ helped organize one of your school fashion shows I would definitely employ you because organizing a fashion show is a bit like organizing the Olympics <laughs> um and I want to bring your attention to sustainability in the industry because um there are so many interesting roles in sustainability across brands across retailers and um it's all about the circular economy now. So there are loads of uh, retail, resale sites like Vestiaire Collective. I'm sure you're all really fun, um, are familiar with Depop. My kids buy all their clothes on Depop. Um, and, you know, that's a real antidote to fast fashion. And I think we have to think really carefully about the future of our planet. Uh, so one of our graduates actually works in the sustainability department at Primark. So I'm hoping she's going to be changing the world. <laughs> um, so working in fashion is so much fun. It really, really, really is fun. And you get to do the most incredible things. One of the things I enjoy doing most is traveling. I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world in my career. Um, as you can tell, when I was at school, I used to get told off the whole time for talking. <laughs> and, but that has really kind of um, been to my advantage working in this industry because it's all about communicating. It's all about, you know, communicating clearly. And that's incredibly important. One thing I would say is that working in fashion is fun, but it's incredibly hard work and it's incredibly competitive. Um, and I guess that the question that most people ask me as I'm, you know, talking to my students or going out to talk in schools is, do I need to be creative? Because most people think that you need to be, you know, incredibly creative, you know, to work in fashion. But I think that whatever your skill set, there is a place for you in fashion, because there is just the most incredible breadth and variety of roles across um, across the industry, which I've touched on. So. Hopefully that's given you some ideas, but creativity is, I guess, the most important thing in the in the fashion industry. Having imagination, being endlessly creative and interested in the future of fashion. You know, if you go for a um, an interview at a college or even for work experience, they're going to ask you about, you know, what you think about fashion. And it's going to be important for you to have done some research and so much what much so much of what we do in fashion is about research and it's so easy for you guys now because you can just look on the internet when I started out there wasn't the internet so you had to do a lot of research in other ways but you know I think curiosity is one of the most important things in fashion you know you can disappear down a kind of Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole and find out about the most fascinating things um so you know being curious is so important being innovative, being willing to experiment and take risks, being open to new ideas um, is so important. And everything that I've done in my career is about finding solutions. So being creative in the way that you come up with solutions is incredibly important. Um, I think I touched on authenticity, but it's really important for you to have your own point of view, which other people will listen to, I promise. And being part of a community, everything we do is about community. And now Condé Nast is all about building communities, um, collaborating, being ready to join in the larger world of fashion. Um, so, you know, whatever your skill set, there is a place for you within fashion. And it's really interesting working at the college because, as I said, you know, the whole idea, the whole raison d'etre of the college 
is to sh shine a light on the different roles, careers that you can have within fashion. And it's so interesting. I've experienced, uh, you know, our students and they've really not known what they wanted to do. And then they've heard from somebody who's come to do an industry speaker talk and they've had a eureka moment and thought, that's exactly what I want to do. So, you know, there is something there for you. And I think it's really important to stand out from the crowd for all the right reasons. So, you know, building your CV, building your experience. So taking a fashion course, like one of the courses we have, perhaps knowing your designer. So having an understanding or having just having scratched below the surface. You know, when I interview at the college and I say, so who's your favorite fashion designer? I promise you. Almost everybody says Chanel, which is fine because Chanel is incredible. But if you can say, oh, I love Miss Sony or I love, Miss, you know, a young designer like Simone Rocha or Harris Reed or somebody really, you know, different, I, that would really make me sit up and notice. So it's important to kind of know a bit about the background. When I used to interview people to be my assistant at British Vogue, I used to say, so have you looked at the magazine? And they say, yes. And so, well, you know, which fashion stories did you enjoy the most? And they would say, oh, well, I don't, I'm not sure. I kind of like them all. And at that point, you knew they'd never picked up the magazine. <laughs> but if you have, you know, you're able to say, well, I love that story with Nick Knight. And, you know, that really chimes with my aesthetic. You know, you can tell that that person is actually interested. They don't just think, oh, I want to have a cool, cool job and work in fashion. So knowing your photographers, models and stylists, so important. So, you know, if you're reeling, if people are talking about people in the industry, you know, you're going to you're going to know who they're talking about. Interning for a fashion company is a great way um, of getting experience, organizing a fashion show. I think I touched on interning and work experience are vitally important, I would say. Um, and I always say to my students, make a list of 10 brands that you love the most and ring them. Don't just email them, ring them and ask if they have a work experience program, because that's really important. You don't want to just get lost in, you know, thousands of emails that brands get every day or even, you know, getting in touch with small design studios locally you know, they might have more opportunities and you get to learn a huge amount. But also, if you don't enjoy it, you get to learn what you don't want to do. And I think that's almost as important. Going to exhibitions, watching fashion films. When I started working at British Vogue, I couldn't believe how much photographers and stylists reference film. And, you know, having a knowledge of film is really important. Um, so many incredible films that you can watch, even watching TV shows like uh, Bridgerton or Emily in Paris, you know, very, very fashion focused shows um, and creating portfolios of your ideas. Everything we do, as I said, is about, you know, unique ideas. So creating a portfolio is a really good thing to do. If you want to be a writer, I truly believe it's all about practice. So write for your school magazine, write as much as you can, start a blog, um, and having another language or learning another language is such a game changer in this industry, in the fashion industry. And I think that, you know, it's now such a global industry that having another language is a huge, huge positive. And I've really seen that with our students when they graduate, they go into the world and having another language really helps. So, you know, standing out for all the right reasons, I think, is is so important. So just telling you a little bit about the Condé Nast College, I'm just going to skim through really quickly. But um, as I said, the Condé Nast College has been going almost 10 years and we teach about the business side of fashion. We have lots of different courses. Um, we celebrate the extraordinary. I think I've said that. Um, and this is a short video, which I'm thinking may not work. So I might just skip through it. Um, but we have some incredible courses for students over 18, but we do have one amazing course called the Teen Vogue Festival, um, which the next one is going to be on the 9th and 10th of July. And it's going to be in person in the college in Greek Street and online. And it's an incredibly good price. It's only £95 for the weekend. Definitely worth coming to. Um, and, you know, we have amazing speakers. We have the editors from magazines. It's 
it's just a great introduction to the fashion industry and I would really, really, really recommend it. And a lot of students who've come to the uh, Vogue Teen Festival have um, gone on to do more of our courses. So definitely look at that. If any of you are interested, I can um, give you more information. You can go to our website. So the longer courses we have, um, we have a very, very uh, exciting new uh, BA that's starting this year. It's It's been rewritten. Um, it's a two year fast track BA in fashion communication and industry practice. So all our courses are very vocational. They're purposely very broad. So you learn a huge amount about the industry. Um, you know, we're in the unique position of being center of the industry. So you you get to learn a huge amount. We partnered with Buckingham University, who pioneered this incredible two year fast track BA and our students who've gone through the course and have graduated have found it it pretty intense but it, it's a really really great course um, we have a, a vogue foundation program which is kind of like um, preparation for higher education and we have a very intensive course called the Condé Nast certificate and we have one in fashion media fashion marketing and fashion communication so lots and lots of different courses the shorter courses coming up soon, actually, um, the Vogue Summer Intensive is is four weeks. It tends to be for people who are working in the industry. Um, the certificate, which I mentioned, is the very intensive 10 week course. Um, and we have one week courses coming up in June. So one week of fashion styling, one week of journalism, one week of business held in person in the college post pandemic, which is so exciting to have people back in the college. Um, and I just wanted to show you some student work um, to give you a bit of an idea of what our students are doing visually. So this was a project uh, by Angel. So when Angel graduated from the college, this was his project. He really, really interested in styling. He went on to work at Stella McCartney in the social media department. And now he's working at leading kind of cool magazine with Katie Grand it's called Perfect Magazine and it's absolutely the place to be so he has done incredibly well uh, this is the final project by Sophia Daniel she's now social media producer at the Outnet which is part of Netaporte and the Ukes group she did this amazing uh, fashion shoot in Brighton this was the final project by Lamonia, and she, when she showed this at her final um, exhibition, it was seen by the editor-in-chief of Vogue Greece, who offered her a job. So very, very exciting for Lamonia working at Vogue Greece. So what makes us unique as a college is our access to um, amazing industry speakers. So here is Edward Enninful. Sorry, my dog is barking. Oh. <laughs> um, Anna Winter with our students. Uh, we have uh, an annual trip to New York and we have one day at One World Trade Center Tower, which is the Condé Nast headquarters. And Anna is a huge supporter of our college. Tommy Hilfiger here. Yes, Edward Enninful and Sarah Harris is deputy here at the college. Oh, there's me in the back. <laughs> Um, and we've had amazing speakers, everyone from Stella McCartney, Victoria Beckham, Yasmin Le Bon, um, Anna De La Russo. Unique access to Vogue editors. Um, this was when I take students around Vogue magazine and we uh, got to see Edward and Naomi Campbell was there too with Vanessa Kingurian here, our students. Hold on, I'm just going to get my dog to stop barking. Sorry, guys. Um, so our industry projects and collaborations, we do a really important part of our courses. Um, the pictures on the left are when we did a social media takeover of Manolo Blahnik's Instagram. He sent us all his new season collection of shoes and bags and our students created these uh, unforgettable images in our studio with the snake and the dog, <laughs> which was quite exciting at the time. Uh, we collaborate with a lot of beauty brands like MAC, 
Estee Lauder. And this image on the uh, right hand side is one of the uh, beauty, uh, fa sorry, fashion stories that our students created for Vogue Arabia when it launched and they loved it so much they published it on their website. So amazing industry opportunities. Um, and what are our graduates doing now? So I just thought I would show you um, a, a little, you know, few pictures of our uh, graduates. So Mikhail, who was a, one of our first students back in 2013, he is now vice president of brand revenue at British Vogue. He was the associate publisher, but he's he's just done phenomenally well. <clears throat> Josie Judd, who when she left the college, went and worked for a year in the Condé Nast video team, uh, then worked to work at British Vogue as the picture editor, and she's now commerce picture editor at British GQ. And Yoris, who I saw yesterday, Yoris Henrik, who uh, when he came to the college, he came and did the certificate course. He was a fashion designer in Belize and he completely pivoted and he is now creative producer for Vogue, um, focusing on the Vogue Club. Uh, which is part of Condé Nast Entertainment, which is probably one of the biggest growing areas of our brand. So they've all done incredibly well. We're so, so proud of them. And, you know, it was lovely to see, uh, lovely to go into Vogue House yesterday and see so many of our graduates um, doing so many interesting things. Yeah, so I guess it's all about working in fashion and the creative industries, about building your brand, building your career, you know, building your future. And I would really recommend it. As I mentioned, I'm an incredible fashion evangelist. I think it's such an exciting, um, stimulating place to work. And there are so many incredible opportunities. So I hope I've given you some idea of the sorts of things you might be able to do. And thank you so much for listening. That was absolutely wonderful. Sorry, thank you so sorry much. Sorry about my dog. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear um, it. Uh, well, I'm just more worried about how you managed to uh, to stop it so quickly. <laughs> well, the cat was into. I've got a puppy, and the cat was trying to attack the puppy. Anyway, <laughs> oh right, okay. Well, it's all good. We're all good. Um, right then. So uh, we've had a lot of questions, and we've got about ten minutes left. Okay, I'll do my best to. <clears throat> rattle through them as quickly as possible obviously without um kind of jeopardizing any quality of answer um i will start in the um order that they were asked um mm -hmm. if so if we can take your mind back um to a couple of questions actually that were asked at the beginning around um how is technology changing in the fashion industry so i'll actually lump this together a bit there was a question a few questions around how is technology changing? Um, how has it changed the industry over the last 30 years? Oh and my God. How, okay. has, how has the industry become more sustainable? Now, I appreciate that you could probably run a whole session on that. But yeah, uh, yeah what have you got any kind of snapshot of thoughts? Yeah, so technology has changed the industry, you know, completely. When I started working in the fashion industry, the internet wasn't even invented and we didn't I didn't even have a computer. I worked on an electric typewriter. So it was the Stone Age. So technology has made a huge, huge difference. Even when I left British Vogue in 99, we only had the intranet. We didn't have the Internet. So now, you know, when I started, it was all about the print magazine. But now it's about all the digital platforms. So the digital revolution has transformed the industry out of all proportion. And now, you know, with the metaverse, all the, you know, VR, um, all the, you know, that whole area has radically changed it once again. So, you know, the media companies like uh, Condé Nast are all about creating content globally. And in the last 18 months, Condé Nast has gone through a radical restructuring. So all the brands are being brought into line and all the technology has changed it. You know, it's it's all about a 360 approach to all the brands and that's been driven by technology. But we talk a lot about how technology is changing the industry to make it more sustainable. And, and that's so important because, you know, technology is being used to try and improve the industry, you know, streamline um, processes, make things better technology is being used to improve things like, um, you know, fabrics, the technology 
is being used to kind of streamline processes. And obviously, in terms of things like shopping, uh, the shift has been almost completely to e-commerce, particularly with the pandemic. And I, I think, you know, technology is going to change it again. We were talking, uh, I think I mentioned about the metaverse and, you know, what people think is going to happen. You know, social media now drives so much of what we do in the fashion industry. And obviously, it's become so much more democratic, which I think is so good. I mean, I would say technology has made this industry more democratic. When I started, very few people were able to go to shows. But, you know, now the shows are either um, virtual or the people who go to the shows live stream them. You know, there's a huge department um, at Condé Nast uh, called Vogue Runway, and they um, have a huge team and they push out videos of the shows. So, yeah, I would say technology has um, made the industry much more democratic, which can only be a good thing. It's more inclusive. I think that um, it's changed it 100% for the better. It really, really has. And people are much more aware of the industry. You know, how many, I don't know how many million people kind of looked at the Met Gala, but it's now such a global event, um, you know, because when it started, when Anna Winter started it, it was just really for society ladies in New York. But now it's for everybody. It's a global event. Um, it's, you know, showcasing designers. It's uh, great for celebrities, whether they're in music or whether they're in film or in fashion. You know, it's it's a huge global event. Brilliant. That is a, a wonderful and very succinct answer to a very open-ended question. <laughs> <with you. laughs> um, few questions actually about the college and the courses itself which I think is really important for us to go through Megan said is the college the same as a uni can I still get a degree and live at the college very 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 good question so the college is a really small private college um and you you can't actually live in the college because we don't have any accommodation but we can recommend accommodation so we do not have university status as yet um interestingly we had a um some communication this week funnily enough from some ministers who want to come and have a look at the college because back in the day we had joe johnson boris's brother who came to look at the college when probably about five years ago and was very keen to have a lot of you know, vocational colleges like ours be given university status. So right now we're not a university, but we are, um, our courses are accredited by the University of Buckingham and they are the degree, degree awarding body. Because we are a private college and we're just going through the process at the moment, it's taking quite a long time um, to get with the Office of Students so that we can be, um, uh, so students can get um the grants to come to the college but it's not quite the same so we are we still do have um private fees which are higher than nine thousand pounds a year but we're doing a lot to change that also um i've been working very hard during lockdown uh to make the college more inclusive um by what we're trying to do is build up a body of bursaries and scholarships. So at, at the moment, we have two full scholarships on our BA course, on our TO BA, uh, but we're hoping to increase that. So I'm working with um, the advisory council to build scholarships. So we've got everyone from Donatella Versace to Victoria Beckham to Grace Coddington to so many different people who are trying to help us um, under the umbrella of Edward Enninful. So you know, we're really working hard to make the college more inclusive, more accessible. Um, uh, so that's definitely one of our missions at the moment. But at the moment, we're um, still a private college. OK, brilliant. Which leads me on actually quite nicely to a question around how to apply. It was actually, do you apply to the course on UCAS or direct? So I'm assuming there that it's directly with you, isn't it? Well, interestingly, actually, the, the options are twofold. So you can apply through UCAS, but you can also apply directly to the college. And our head of admissions, James McCarthy, um, is incredibly helpful. So if anybody has any questions, um, they can email me and I can forward them on to James. So we have a number of uh, really informative um, open days. In fact, we had an open day uh, the day before yesterday that was a virtual open day, but we're trying to um, start our in-person open days again really soon. Um, 
so you can get some sort of idea of you know what the college is like and what the courses are like and talk to some of our current students and then if anyone's interested I can always put you in touch with our graduates who are working in the industry but yes so the two ways of applying are through UCAS and are through um, you can apply directly so the shorter courses obviously you apply directly to the college but the longer courses um, the undergrad and the postgrad courses you can apply through UCAS. Wonderful thank you. Um, right then Will said how many students are at Condé Nast College? Yeah very very good question so <laughs> we are a quite a small college and the um, building that we're in now really can only accommodate 100 students but during the pandemic we pivoted and we've got a lot of online courses so we went from 14 courses to 44 and now we have a much much larger student body although a lot of those are online so I think now we have um, I think we now have almost 200 students so we can't fit them all in the college at the same time so we are um and this is kind of top secret, but we are thinking that now we're going to be 10 years old, we might have to move to a bigger premises because, you know, we, we've we just had such a sort of phenomenal success with the college that I think that um, we might be moving to a bigger bigger premises. But we, um, yeah, we, we are quite a small college at the moment. And it, in many ways, that's always been our unique selling point is the fact that we're, we're a really small college and we, you know, we get to know our students really well. They get to know us really well. And in my role, um, I've got a rather crazy title of head of stakeholder engagement. <laughs> I am really the kind of um, uh, the interface, if that's the right word, between the industry and our students. So I organize a lot of industry speakers to come and talk at the college um, to inspire our students. But I also create opportunities for students for placements and job uh, jobs when they leave the college. Wonderful, brilliant, thank you. Um, right then, I will stay on this topic actually. Um, one second, I'm sorry, there's been so many. I um, I feel like I'm losing the plot a little bit here. Um, there was a question, actually, yes, I do apologise. Madeline said she's joining us from Peru and she said a course is available online. So yes, they yes. are. Absolutely. Yeah, they are. Yeah. A quick answer to that. Um, Lois said, what's the community and culture like at the college? Is there a certain characteristic everybody has in common? Yes. So the characteristic that everybody has in common is their love and passion for the fashion industry, I think. And um, I would say that, oh, oh, my gosh, our students have the most incredible work ethic. They're really focused. They're very engaged. Um, the culture is one of a really it's kind of like a family. I don't know, because it's quite a small college. And as I said, you know, we get to know our students really well. It's very nurturing. We have an incredible um, lady called Marcia who sits on the reception. She knows everyone so well. And she, um, you know, I think everyone feels very included. We have a lot of students because they're creative and they have like um, issues like dyslexia <clears throat> or mental health issues. And we really are very nurturing. We look after people. So I'm just going to have a drink. So, yeah, I would say that the culture is, you know, overwhelming love of fashion and the fashion industry, um, being creative. Uh, but everybody kind of looks out for each other. You know, I've noticed when our students are working collaboratively, they do really look out for each other. And I think that that's something that that movie I mentioned earlier, The Devil Wears Prada, it's. It's not fashion. The fashion industry is not like that at all. It's not bitchy. It's very collaborative. People have to work well. And the people who do well in this industry are people who are professional, who work hard, but are above all nice. Because, you know, you're going to get booked again and again if you're somebody who is really good at their job. But above all, they're nice. They're, you know, fun to be with. You know, they work hard, but they you know, they have a really good attitude. And I think that's really important to point out that this industry is not, <clears throat> you know, is not a tough industry. I've worked my whole career with Anna Winter. I've never seen her being, you know, like how they had in that in that movie. It's it's just not like that. I mean, maybe it was 
you know, many, many, many years ago, but I've worked in the industry for a long time and I've never seen that sort of, you know, tough behavior. So, yeah, I would say that the the culture is is caring and nurturing at our college. Brilliant. Thank you. And I think there in the way that you've described um kind of inadvertently like what kind of characteristics will get you far in in the industry those are all the things as well that I would imagine that you should be weaving into applications and so on examples of how you can demonstrate how you are you know and and you could display those characteristics um I could actually talk to you for the rest of the day. I found it so <laughs> interesting. Um, but we we have reached the point now where we need to wrap the session up. And first of all, as always, I would like to thank the audience here. It's been a really, really well attended session and um, loads of interesting questions. And I know we haven't managed to get through them all, but I think I've tried to pick out the ones that be most applicable to the most people. Um, the session has been recorded. It will be emailed to you, as I said, at the end of the at the beginning of the session. Sorry. Um, Zoe, thank you from Career Map for putting together such a brilliant presentation. I think that, well, I don't think, I, I would say that your, you know, your passion, experience, your knowledge, it's come across brilliantly. And I feel like if I was significantly younger, I would be <laughs> knocking on the door right now myself. Um, so, yes, thank you to everybody. Um, Zoe, I'll just let you say goodbye for a moment before we, we log off. Oh, bye, everybody. And thank you so much for joining uh, this morning. And I've really enjoyed talking to you. And do feel free to get in touch. I look forward to seeing you at the um, Vogue Team Weekend. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. <laughs>